Hi guys, welcome back to another episode. Uh, this week we are installing our water maker. We did a video already showing you guys what water maker we chose. No one is paying us to promote this water maker. This is our choice. We purchased this water maker. We did get a discount, but I just wanted to clear that up because a few people were saying, um, asking if we got paid to say what we were saying in our last video. We didn't. We just really, really like this water maker. So um, this video is Lee installing the water maker and that's about it. If you're here to watch us having a great time or do it going on any adventures or any sailing, there's no sailing in this video. So just wanted to clarify that this is purely a water maker installation video. We hope you enjoy. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. Okay guys, this is the water maker system minus the pump that we don't have for the raw water pump. Today's task is going to be installing our membranes for starters. I did want to put all this in the engine bay, mechanical space, whatever you want to call it and have it all in the one area. I didn't really want to split it all up, but I was thinking on the way down because we had to bleed our engine quite a few times and it was quite warm in our engine bay. We do have an engine exhaust, a blower you would call it, but the temperature's still pretty warm in there so I thought it's probably not the best location for our membrane so I found a new spot that I think is going to work better it's going to be away from the heat of the engine bay it's literally a meter or so away from the pump these units come with two meters stock hose we didn't have much time to work out what we were going to do so we just got the stock unit so this is pretty much how you get it if you do want to put these membranes at the front of your boat and have the water maker at the back well you'd have to let seawater pro know about certain lengths but for us it's going to work everything's still together it's just we're moving these membranes behind the backrest in the wall and it's going to be a lot cooler so it's going to eliminate the ambient temperature in the engine bay what we're going to do guys we're going to get this in here i found a spot for our control panel i'm going to set up all the hoses lines it's pretty straightforward the instructions you get with this it's awesome it's pretty self-explanatory tells you what you've got what you can do what you can't do blah 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 and even at the back here there's the qr codes with tutorials on everything you need to know how to put this in so i'm not going to bore you guys too much in a nutshell water comes in through our filters minus the pump i don't have that supplies the water flow it then makes its way through the membranes to our motherboard and spits out fresh water it is really that simple we've got a fresh water flush which is a manual one. There's no fancy components. Very simple unit, I love it. You know, I previously had the Rain Man and I did like that. There's just a few key things I like about this. I feel that the membranes themselves are designed a lot better and I love the concept of having this. Quran, it's just a matter of switching boost pump and main pump and it's making water once you've preset the optimum pressure for your water maker. So, and then come time to turn it off, it's just a matter of pushing those two switches down and it's off and the automatic timer will take care of the automatic flush but we'll make water every day so the flushing is not such a big thing for us uh, we will flush after every use it's just what we did with our last water maker we didn't have any problems we had many years of trouble free water making in my opinion guys i've looked at a few on the market and i think this little guy here is so simple and that's what i want i don't want things that are complicated especially when it comes to making water for us it's a very important part of cruising because we don't hang at marinas usually uh, apart from now all right guys let's go and install the membranes this is our little uh, couch here behind there behind the backrest is where we're going to find a space there'll be enough room to put our membrane put our panel here and we're going to put behind here hopefully it could change apart from our chessboard and our cutting board so behind this board here, I'm assuming this, it's going to be close. I'm going to take this apart and measure it and see if we've got enough room behind here. The reason I'm going to put this behind here, it's definitely going to be cooler here. Hoping that it'll slow the growth of anything inside the membrane. That's the plan. That's where it's going. I'm going to get into it. So this is now behind. I thought there'd be a little bit of a space here. But there's not a lot of room. I can, this is where the board's going to go back in. I've got about what are we talking in here 25 mil got an inch guys between there and here so what i intend to do i just work my way around there's not a lot of room so you'll be lucky to be an inch so 
So I will mount this to the back of the board that's the back of the backrest here and go from there. The gap that I've got to work with, it should just be a snug fit. Sweet spot there. There's been a little bit of a bump in the road. What's going on, babe? Well, okay. In a picture perfect world, comes with all the pieces you need to join it together, like so. But in this application, I don't really want this pipe hanging out that way because that's going to be the backrest. So I really want it like this. So, so it's just parallel with it all. But these come with elbows. If I had given it a bit of forethought and thought where we're going to mount all this, I could have asked Mike to put uh, straight barbs on here, which would be not a problem. But that's just one of the things to think about when you're uh, getting one of these is where you're going to mount it. And I really didn't give it that much thought because I thought it was going in the engine bay and that would have worked because there's plenty of room in there. Because we changed our plans and we're going in here. I don't know what I'm going to do yet because I don't really want to go chasing fittings down here. Uh, these are all nice stainless steel fittings that Mike supplies and I don't want to get any crappy fittings to go with this. So I may just turn these or I may turn the membranes and I may try and run them and maybe something like that. But it gives me a bit of height and the only problem is my gap is sort of here where they really fit. So, and that's a little bit long, but I may be able to sort of squeeze them or something. I don't know. Stay tuned. I'm gonna think about this one. It's gonna problem solve another problem. Getting to know the old girl. I'll leave you to it. Looks like it's going well. Look at this. Woo! Who needs a living room or a table? <laughs> Not us. Why don't you tell all the good people at home what you're doing there, darling? Oh, just making a big mess. <laughs> I can see that. But you have added some more things on here. You've added a hose onto here. And you've got some holes and things that we've threaded through here. And some that came up through there somewhere, right? Coming out of there. And they're gonna go to the membranes. Raining outside today in Ensenada. I don't know, I must be getting on the two o'clock because I'm getting hungry again. We got some big seas forecast today, five meters. They said, make sure your boats are all tied up well. So we may have a wonder if the rain disappears later and go and have a look at the surf. I'm not up for the surf, I haven't surfed for a while. So I'm just cutting out for our water maker. The working inside bill has just got the vacuum. Not making too much of a mess. Started pulling and running wires today and I've pretty much pulled a whole garbage bin of old wires and pipes and bits and pieces. So I sort of got sidetracked on where we're at today. The more we sort of clear out of everywhere that's not in use or old and blah, blah, blah. It makes it a lot easier to see what we have and what we've got to work with. We're getting there. I've sort of positioned everything where I think it's going to work for the water maker now. So it's just a matter of cut this out and plumb it all up. We don't have our water pump yet, but I'm pretty anxious. So I'm probably going to use our air conditioning lift pump and try out the water maker. Because I just want to make sure everything works. I want to get up and running and just make sure everything's good. That's it. Kind of stuff flapping my gums, I've got to get busy, so I'll see you when this panel's mounted up there. Look at that, hey? A little bit of tape on the edges and it doesn't chip up. Oh, is that a trick? Is that a little tip oh there? look, when you got fancy furniture, you know, and you you want to scratch it, but at the same time you use a bit of tape and it doesn't lift up all the edges. Well he loves blue tape. But it fits. I measured twice and I've cut once, so that's gonna fit. I'm um, just going to plumb everything up behind here. Got a number of fittings. Plumb it up, tidy it up. Half the process in putting this in was finding a big bird's nest of wires and bits and pieces not in use. It's all good. I'll keep going. We'll get all this plumbed up and we'll mount it. There it is. It's mounted into the wall. What have you done to yourself, oh, darling? No, baby. I just. I wasn't looking. I leant back to grab my nips up there, but my Stanley knife's open and I just oh, jammed my hand into oh, it. Oh, no. So you should always have the blade in. You should. Oh, come here. Where is it? What the? Is it open, okay? Yeah, just grab the staple gun and give her a few staples. She'll be right. I can stitch it up. I got needles. You're in good hands, don't you worry. 
Oh, I just reach back to grab my nips. But and, you um, grab the knife like. I grab, grab the it. knife. Like it's not too like sharp. Aggressively. No, it's the other one. It's the sharp one. <laughs> I've been playing around in here. Uh, I've wired this up now. The panel does have a breaker, but I've got another one on here anyway. We had it there. I thought I'd use it. So we've wired up now this. I've got to just finish off at the panel. You can wire these either way, actually. Can't really go too far wrong because it'll just go one way or the other if you get the polarity around there either way. Yeah, I'm missing a lift pump, which will be going down here somewhere. That's what I've got those wires for. Red cap, which has to be replaced with a breathing cap. Obviously, they have a sealed cap so that the oil doesn't drain out during transportation. And I've uh, got a couple of lines at the back here just to tighten up. I'm going to start putting my filters and all that. So all this is going to be sort of covered up. I do want access to here, which is where I'll drain the oil from when I do an oil change. And my filters will hang from here in front. So it sort of will block the unit a bit. But come oil change time, I just remove the filters and I've got access. I think it's going to work out. 5,000 watt inverter, which is the Xanthrax one. Just for the water maker. It's only wired into the water maker. And if it doesn't work, well, we'll have to uh, look at uh, another Victron down the line. But for now, we can go over to this one. It just means we can't really use anything while we're making water which is fine. Okay, so I've just plumbed up our water maker here. This one will give us our boost pump pressure. We've got our other white line here, which is our water that is made, which has gone through our membranes, which was behind the seat I'm sitting on. It comes through a TDS meter, which shows us and monitors how much, how many parts per million and tells us how fresh our water is. It also comes back out here and runs to our tank. We have our brine line, we have our high pressure line, and that's about it. It looks confusing, but it's so, so simple. And the only thing I've got to do now is just wire up for our pump. And this is this part of the job done. His units were flying out the door and he didn't have a boost pump for me. I had to wait. We were in San Diego and our boost pump's in San Diego, so we've got to get that down here. So I'm going to take our line from our air conditioning unit and run it over to here until we get our... Um, pump from San Diego. This part of it's done. Behind me is done. I'm going to put a splash guard here and when we do the test on this I'm just going to make sure nothing's leaking and everything's right and I'll even unscrew behind the seat here and I'll check all the membranes. We'll let the pump run for an hour and make sure there's not a drip anywhere in sight but we've got a little bit to do before then so I'll stop flapping my gum. What's going on captain? Pretty nice. Do a slight modification. As always. Because the timer was set to come on this side, but to keep it upright and the inlet's at the top and they recommend keeping it upright, it'd be up here in the middle of no man's land. So I've had to make a little manifold up to bring that in and just set that back here because I didn't really want anything that can be bumped or anything slide into it. So you know, um, it looks beautiful. It's getting there. It's getting about there really. We're ready to make our own water. Even though the arrows point that way it's because they were red from the other side but the fresh water comes in here goes through and flushes the unit or the seawater comes in through here through a 20 micron then a 5 micron and then into the pump. The pump's mounted behind here. Got a switch here circuit breaker here for it. But guys, so we finally got our pump from Seawater Pro. This line here comes from our sea chest, so you know where that is in the boat. It's just our raw water intake for here. Uh, it comes into this pump here. This is the Seawater Pro pump, and that follows the line out of here, and that goes up and feeds the water maker. Uh, it's pretty simple. Just above here, I, you could mount this anywhere you like. Flow control, so I've got that set at roughly 15 psi when the water is getting made. So you can adjust that, get the correct pressure that you're after. Set that at 15, and you can adjust that as needed. Finalizing the water maker up here. We don't have a. Oh, we got a bit of solar coming in. We've got about. Oh, we had about 80 amps before. There's a bit of cloud at the moment. We've got about a thousand watts of solar coming in. We're only using about 72 at the moment. But um, we're gonna fire it up. Okay guys, so the water pump's pretty simple and that's why I like this one. It's preset the pressure here. So all I do is put the boost pump on. You'll see the pressure come up. It's gone right up now. So once I'm running, I want that around 15 somewhere. And I've just got the other switch. So I know my boost pump's working. 
and I'm gonna put the main pump on. load so it's using about well we're already drawing 70 uh, with charges etc so we're using about a thousand to 980 to a thousand I've been I've noticed the AC load so we've got about a thousand lots of solar so we're drawing obviously we've got fridges and everything running so a little bit more Sun drawing nothing Nelly running the water maker straight from our solar panels so that's it so come time to I tell the kids to turn the water off. All they have to do is turn the two switches straight off like that. We're finished making water. Uh, we'll do that every day. We'll try and make an hour of water a day, which is, you know, over a hundred liters a day. Pretty hungry on water, depending on our activities, whether we're diving, surfing, snorkeling, gear needs washing down, we need washing down. We don't go short on the water. As far as water making goes, the more water you can make, the better I feel anyways. Lee, you're able to wash anything that needs washing that has salt on it, um, and you're able to do washing. I think bare minimum of what we have, a 40 gallon an hour water maker, whether you run it the way we have through our solar, or whether you run it with a generator. A um, previous boat was run with a generator. Same sort of amount of water we were making. I think that's sort of a good minimum for a family cruising. Because it's just not fun guys if you can't have a shower you can't wash your dive gear down you don't have enough water to you know wash your dishes it's just it's not as fun so as soon as we start adventuring again and this thing's getting run every single day we'll give you a six month update on how the system is running maybe a three month or maybe whenever we get a chance been through the system it's a very simple system there's very complicated systems out there we never had a problem with our rain man it was a simple unit this one's just as simple, just a few little features as I discussed that I like better. So I think we're gonna have a good run with this too. Thanks for watching that video guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to put a thumbs up and if you haven't already, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any more of our episodes. See you next time, bye. Yeah.